Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we're doing another and the last one of my little stitcheries for the stitchery swap. Part of the Annie Claxton, Artie Farty Annie's um, suggestion that we form little groups and flip around little uh, stitcheries. So the one under here is for Sonia and it's completed. So Sonia, look away. I'm going to reveal the final finished piece for Sonia. There we go, our little bird hovering over the nest. So it came together really well. I ended up doing a heap of seed stitch through the bird area and down around each of those little sprigs and then out through here. It really helps fussy cut items to blend with their background. It's put, sort of like putting a veil net over all of your fussy cut pieces. And it just helps soften that hard edge of scissors that have cut out those little elements. The little bird nest, I didn't change anything. I just got those little beads down in there for the little bird eggs. Um, put a few more stitches in there to make sure all of the um, twigs and bits and bobs the little birds use for the nest stay in place and really just reinforced it so everything is nice and secure so that one is done so I'll just bring it up nice and close so you can see all of those little stitches and layers of bits and pieces these are so much fun okay last one so here's my piece of fabric once again we measure our 12 centimeters and snip and rip now this one is for a lovely lady I've been following her on Instagram for some time and she just does the most beautiful work she's um, does a lot of patchwork um, and has must have the most beautiful collection of fabrics I think I just oh if there's gorgeous florals to be seen and pieced together in a patchwork formation. Anita, you're doing a beautiful job. So I reached out to Anita and said, I must, must do a square for you. And her requested colors came back dusty pink and green, which I could have guessed. I can flip through her pages on Instagram it's not much of an edge there and um, easily see so much inspiration okay now I have grabbed out this tilde pack woodlands but before I go into that this little bucket here has some odds and bods in it and this little flower I've been looking at for some time for a few of these pieces but it's so big. There's another one there, but I just don't think that that will do it. So I just wanted to have one more play. See, that's probably more the size we need. But I just... I'll keep it out. This is the one I really feel like I should be using. Okay, so if I get rid of a lot of that cream, I should come close to being able to fit that. Now, what did I do with my scissors? Oh, my goodness. My good, there they are. They're at the other end of the table, guys. Hold that thought. <clears throat> okay. Alrighty, these are the ones. I've had a few people ask me about these scissors. They're uh, a brand that I get from the hardware store and they're in the pruning section. Rose pruning scissors, florist scissors, and they are fantastic. They're nice and strong. They're very sharp and they have this rubber soft coating here that when you're doing a lot of fussy cutting you're um, sort of protecting yourself a little bit it's not as harsh 
So let's just get this little guy cut out because I think this is the linchpin to the whole thing. If I can't get this little fellow into position where I want him, I'll have to go hunting for another little feature piece. Okay. What can I say? Where has the year gone? I won't cut down into there because I will seed stitch the edges of this again just to blend it back into the background. Okay. I might... Oh. I might leave... Oh, mum, 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 mum. I'm thinking I can use some lace down that side or something to give it a bit of a, like it's poking out from behind something. So I might just do that. I can always go back in and, um, yeah, I like that. So backgrounds, let's get started on backgrounds. So this is just a beautiful piece of linen. So I might just square this up a little bit. Okay. do I might use this entire piece on the background there's my template can I and let's do it on the yeah I'm going to lay the whole piece down this is that linen that had that soft pink undertone about it I suspect that someone may have tried to dye. This was part of a, a, a doily. <clears throat> and I suspect someone may have tried to dye it because it just has this very subtle pink tone about it. It's so pretty. I'll cut it a little bit bigger than what I need because you know how I am. I barely stay within the confines of the piece. I can't even draw the square straight, it would seem. I bet this is crooked. Oh, nothing like rough cutting the fabric. Oh yeah, that's, that's good enough. Okay, I'm happy now. I just feel like I need this soft pink piece to be floating on top of my square this time. Now, technically, I should go through and invisible stitch that all down. Being that it's a big piece, it'd be highly recommended because it's um, it'll get puckery, but it is only over a small area, so I'm pretty sure I can, it's got a little bit of flex in it too, so you sort of, I probably will do that, you know. But not with you guys because that would be boring TV. So let's now position this little fellow. Okay, so I'm going to take that pin out. Being that he's quite a large piece too, I feel like just getting him pinned down will go a long way to holding all these other fabrics. Okay, 
Right, oh, we have to have some of this. Some very, very old feed sack. Okay, maybe I'll get that pin out and turn it around. Miss Pepper, yes, I can see you. Has a little wolf then comes to the window and looks at me to say, hi, mum. I really like this fabric too. I think we need a swoosh of that going up that side. Really not sure where I'm heading with all this, but you know how it is. You just start placing your pieces down and slowly build it up. Okay, that's something. What else have we got in here? This mustardy colour. I feel like it sort of works because it picks up the mustard in that piece. I wonder, how would that go down that side? Is it too strong? Maybe. <clears throat> or do I put it at the base? Mm. Probably should use my bigger scissors because then I could get one big sweeping cut instead of nibbling away at these little guys. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I've got a thought. Do I slide it in underneath all of this? Or do I slide it in? I think I'm going to slide it in over here. Where's the boundary? Back here. I slide it in there. Like that. Now, let's have a look at the lace. We've got to have some lace. I should put my phone on silent because I just have a feeling it's going to ring. Um, lace, 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 lace. What goodies? Where's that little fine, smaller laces? Here's a little beauty. She's an old girl. Oh, there's even a little hole, a little blemish. This one's from Paris. Do I? I'm just thinking I move. I'm losing too much of my flower. So I'm going to just move it over a little bit. Tuck that under there. It can creep up onto there. Sort of want to give everything its space. It's no use having all these pretty little details. Let's go to the other end and see if it's a little, a little nicer. There's two stains there. So that would just miss the, like I can appreciate a good stain on something, but I might just aim to not have a stain just in case Stains may not be your thing. Okay, let's just pop that away. It's so delicate. Oh my goodness. I wonder what it would have been used for back in the day. I don't think it's been unpicked from anywhere. I think it's still very much intact. Oh, something to pin that. Really classy, isn't it? <laughs> That'll do for now. So we've got this little bit of lace. So this here, I 
grabbed out too. It's a little bit of soft pink. I like that. So maybe I'm sort of covering the detail in that lace. But does that matter? You can see it through. I just want to get some pink happening over here and I'm sort of wanting to build it up a little bit, a little bit decorative. <clears throat> And then I could do like some cluster of beads and that through this zone and some stitches. But I am covering the lace. Maybe I'll start a whole new cluster over here. I don't know. I actually, I'm not liking this. I feel like the flower needs to come. Have we got any pins in there? The flower needs to come out into here in its own space and not be inhibited by anything. So I'm wondering if I can then build up interest back from the flower. Does that make sense? So let's cut that off. So I can put layers of, let's bring you back a little bit because you are off. Let's get that. It's just about getting the right definition of pieces. You know, you don't want to be covering everything and not seeing the pop of why you chose it, like the pop of color for the reason you chose it. I'm wondering if I can then get a piece of this satin. Don't think I wanna go darker. Let's get this satin. I do love dusty pink and mustard. It's just so pretty. Okay, I think that's good. And we put that down. So it's all about layering up. So we're going to go really full on this side. So now I can get that pink I was thinking in. Let's get our heights right. I can have more of the lace showing. And I can bring that lace right up to there. It's going to give me quite a good area to do some stitching through. You know what I could do with is some sari silk. Because sari silk can be opened up and just cover quite an area. I don't know if I've got any. Got seam binding in there. Let's let's go to the sari silk department. Might be a moment. Okay. Got a little selection of sari silk in this container. So we've got this creamy color. We've also got this dusty color, but I don't know. It doesn't seem to me like the right color. I don't think I want to go that heavy. I just want to Yeah. I like that. So we need a piece of this. We'll overlap that pink to some degree. We're going to get real messy, I think, and just squished it in and make it 
seem interesting. I wonder if there's another little lace I could lay in there. Looking for a fine. little container here has some old girls in it it's not a container yeah I'm thinking I like how that's changing oh it's so fiddly lie that through there Another little French find. I think Anita will appreciate these little French morsels. Okay, so how are we looking so far? We're just building textures up. I haven't exactly used these, have I? I wonder. I sort of, I don't know, I feel like I want to use the tape measure with Anita as well because she does so much quilting. I think I'm going to run that through there. Might bring it down the one and the two let's make it at least look like 12 inches and that's the start of 13 so we might just cut it there and we'll cut it just above the eight there we go so we've got this little tape measure tucking in there as well oh, I'm so over the edge oh gee that pink is way over the edge oh my goodness does it matter oh gosh why can't the girl stay within the boundaries I might be able to squish it across but I doubt it If that just gets all squished up and okay yeah I like that now I don't know if I can get these in let's have a little look no I sort of I really like that and then I can drop some beads through here like have a real little play in all of the the channels Anita it's going over <laughs> gosh can I bring it in let's have one more try at stacking it so that I'm within the boundaries maybe this soft piece has got to come out I'm giving that too much real estate so let's bring those pieces up. Okay. We're going to try harder, girl, to do what we're meant to be doing. So we're going to bring that over. I'm going to bring the flower in so that it's just peeking through. We really need to get that in yep it's in it's in it's going in it has to go in all right so 
now the pink is on the boundary. Okay, I'm happy with that. Here's our old piece of lace. Let's lie that in there. Then we can get our little bit of pink. Then our little sari silk. Yep, that's better. And then we can tuck our little tape measure in. Let's take the sari silk off. Let's get the tape measure in. Just on the inside of all that. So you can just see that pink. And then that comes through there. I'm happy. Okay, let's get this pinned. Oh, I feel so cack handed this morning. Don't know why. Okay, done. Oops. Done. A couple little pins in random spots will just hold it all into position. can't see too much of that pink linen underneath but that's you know it does feel like it's built up some nice texture like it's going to feel quite lush in the hand but I'm, I'm happy with that I think I could do with a pin down here just a catch those fabrics there we go how amazing how different they just all become it's there we go all right I think we have a plan so let's just get some space here Maybe down the bottom here we might put a nice button. What's this button story? Oh, it's a, a mother of pearl button. Yeah, you beautiful thing. We're going to pop that there just to link that whole corner together. And we might even sew it with um, the thread coming through it so that it's like a, uh, uh, a bow holding it on. So, tidy up a little bit, girl, before you get started on the next adventure. Let's needle and thread. And I might use some of my dusty pink crochet cottons to run lines of stitching through. Is what I'm thinking. So when you get, so this one, for example, you do some running stitch through the whole thing and build up layers and layers of stitches. I think that'll look really pretty in this type of design. So let's get that needle and thread happening. I'll just put a few invisible stitches through this side. Well, if I actually stitch down I stitch down that tape measure and that would catch <clears throat> an awful lot of them like so yep That will certainly go a long way in securing the satin. 
and at the same time I've also got that tape measure down so it's just a little it's nearly like hem hemming when you hem up a cuff on the trousers stitch why have I got a mess here these synthetic fabrics that that dusty pink it's probably a chiffon no oh, it's not a chiffon it'd be a ray a nylon -y rayon bridesmaidy type fabric from the 80s when it drops those little fibers they just get in everything okay Oop, 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 oop. Take your time, girl. Don't rush. Get rid of that pin. That'll be a good start. Sort of feel like making some more of these for myself, but you know, I just don't know if I'd like them enough. You know, when you make things for yourself, you... I'm a little bit more indecisive and when you make something for someone else, I start thinking about them and it just sort of comes together because I'm not focused on what I like. So now with this remaining bit of thread, I'm just going to scoot up that side, catching the lace and that sari silk in a few spots. We do, should do more stitching for ourselves where we, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't know, I find it better to focus on a topic, whether it's, you know, someone or an event or a, a theme. I find it hard just to just do it. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just catching that sari silk. I want the sari silk edge to be flapping around a bit. I don't want to totally stitch it down. I want it to feel like little ribbon ringlets, not ringlets, what's the word? Frill, like a little frilly edge. Okay. Now if I come down the other side of that lace <clears throat> I would say I've got that whole side very well secured okay oh come on so what are you all up to today I have no major plans for the first time in a little while I'm just I don't know I've got nothing planned and gee it feels good like every day there's something but it's not work stuff it's health stuff it's family stuff it's just life stuff today I feel like I've just got a day of fresh air I don't know if that makes sense <clears throat> okay I'm going to end that off so I have technically skipped the invisible stitch section but because there's so many great layers in the way of covering large areas that just stitching them down has actually caught everything where I need it to be. Alrighty, now let's get ourselves a little bit more cotton. And we'll do another, we might go through and then we'll come back down and we'll secure that button. And then whatever, <clears throat> whatever thread is left, we'll start working our way 
Actually, I won't put the button on because it'll be in my way of securing that rose. So just hold your horses, girl. Button at the end. So now I'm just going to do the same riveting stitching for you guys. I'm going to try and stay back from the edge a little bit of that lace so it too will be sort of sticking up in the air a little bit. Like a frill. I'll try and keep this as loose as I can, I think. good then we'll come up here and just pop a little stitch there to catch that whoops 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 rusty fabric did I catch it yep I might just do a proper little stitch around <coughs> the rows as in the little fussy cut rows I'm just doing a overcast stitch around its edge to hold it into position. Then I'll come back with seed stitch and that'll really anchor it down. Now I usually do it closer together than I am here. You'll see there's probably a quarter of an inch between it, but that's just for the sake of you guys that you're not sitting there watching me slowly overcast stitch that little rose into position so i'm just gonna <clears throat> jump along a little catch it in a few key spots and then i'll come back and work the piece properly You could use fabric glue to hold your little piece on, which I've done in the past, especially if I've got a lot of them. You just, you work out your positioning of everything and then to then go through and add some stitches to hold them into position, like tacking them down, you know, they wriggle and jiggle. And then you may lose some critical layers that you've just spent 20 minutes thinking about. So I find that's when those um, fabric glues come into great use and the, there's a heap in the quilting industry when they use them to English paper piece. Um, there's also just common old glue stick. You just want a glue that dries soft. You don't want anything that goes real rigid. And of course you can go back to iron-on transfer, um, you know, those fusible, fusible webbing products. They're also a great help to hold everything where you want it. But at the end of the day, a few well-placed little stitches will do the trick. Okay. Now we're down to this little piece of feed sack all the way from Italy. I do have some of my own now. Hence why I was quite liberal with the treasure of feed sack, but I managed to pick up some myself. So I feel like I can start releasing the feed sack from my stash <clears throat> instead of hoarding these four inch by four inch squares. <laughs> it's funny. You'd think I'd be hoarding jewelry or 
hoarding expensive somethings, but no, I'm hoarding little morsels of fabric. Isn't it hilarious? My husband just shakes his head sometimes. <clears throat> He's like, why, do you, why does that make you happy? Why does that piece of lace make you happy? I can't explain it. Okay, that's looking really good. Nice and secure. Oh, don't, don't do that. Sometimes when the thread gets small like this, it just pays to just get a new piece with plenty of length because all you're going to do is spend the next few minutes every second stitch re-threading your needle. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to finish that off. There's my phone going. I just knew that there'd be a call coming and Heaven forbid that they interrupted my stitching time. <clears throat> so let's get a new thread. And I'm going to work that corner down the bottom there of the flower. Get the little flower all stitched it down so I'm now oh goodness me the knots just not quite catching or I'm a bit heavy-handed and ripped it through the fabric that's better so I'm just going to stitch in this corner no I'll wait for that and button <clears throat> I'm getting ahead of myself I really want to work this corner a little bit and maybe the button's got to come along a little bit to here I don't know just leave the button alone girl put the button down okay so what I'll need to do with this video is <clears throat> is I'm going to need to, oh gosh, my throat this morning. I'm going to need to finish the stitching in this video where I've been coming back at the beginning of the next video to show you the finished piece. But because I don't have another one to show you, I need to finish the video with the piece finished. <clears throat> so, what are we at? 43 minutes. I will have to leave a few minutes right at the end to show you the piece finished. And that's the end of the series. Okay. Just working my way up that flower a little more. Now, I will stitch that button on. I just need to stitch the button on. <laughs> I don't think it's going to interfere with too much, but I just feel like I need to get him into position. I'll put the decorative piece of cotton through him at another stage because I don't want it in my way 
when I'm doing all this stitching. As it is, this button's probably going to be in my way, but the girl can't wait. She has to put the button on. So I'll just do a couple little stitches of this cotton. That'll secure it. <clears throat> all right, guys, I will be back in a few seconds to show you the finished piece. Get rid of that. <coughs> oh, goodness me. All right, that's a good start. All right, guys, I'll see you in a moment. Hi, everyone, I'm back and I'm 99% finished this little piece. So let me, where do I start? Okay, uh, didn't change anything with the layers, just stitch them down. I put a um, little bit of decorative stitching here, some fly stitch. Um, you probably can't notice them, but there's a couple in behind the little cluster of beads. Now the rose, I just started embroidering the rose. I try to keep it quite random. I didn't really think too hard about it as in creating the shape of the rose. I just want to pick up on some of the little highlights within the print and uh, embellish it with some stitches. Pretty much used two colors. Yeah, I did. Uh, no, three, there's a pale pink the cream, which is my standard cream. And then I used a variegated thread, all crochet cotton to do some French knots in there. Then I picked some little reddish, reddish raspberry-ish beads just to get a little bit of different texture in that center. Like there's like this little thing coming out of the center of the rose. And you can see how I just kept my stitches quite random. Now, this is where it gets tricky. This here, I ended up cutting numerous petals out of this soft pink um, organza. Is it organza? Technically, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna say it is. And I cut out like a little semicircle with a flat bottom. Does that make sense? Like a little curve with a flat bottom. And then started laying them in around the base of the rose. As you can see, the rose disappeared right back down into this lace. So I just created these little layers. I think there's one, two, three, four. Then there's a little one here, which is five. And then just with some little French knots, use that to secure it. I did consider doing seed stitch, invisible stitch, like so many stitches. And I thought, no, I'll do little French knots. And that holds those little uh, three-dimensional little petals in place. It just helps build up a little bit of interest to the rows. We're sort of, I, I guess too, I'm trialing a few little ideas that I've had for a while um, leading up to the four seasons celebrate the season stitchery where we pick a piece of fabric and then just paint it in threads beads fabrics laces and just decorate the flowers that are printed before us following the artist's steps that were before us so to speak so layering in textiles into an existing panel of fabric i think will be something i'll definitely want to play with in that project. I then just did some little stitches through the center of these uh, leaves, just little daisy stitches, just popping some randomness around the place. Now, the last thing I wanted to do, and I've left this thread here attached. Oh, I added a extra button too. There's an extra button there. It was sitting on my desk and I just felt like it it worked and it sort of ties in those little beads too. And there were some little dark areas within the print is I've got this tiny little bit of eyelash yarn here. So what I'm thinking just to add more layers is I'm going to try and tuck it in under that piece of lace so that it gives this real whimsical feel to the flower. Now that feather stitch, now you can't see it, but there's a feather stitch here which pins the lace down. So that is a little bit of an obstacle, but I thought if I went under the button at the bottom there, 
I should be able to make it work. And then with a few well-placed stitches, it might look like it's meant to be. So let's try that again. It's got a little bit. So I'm going to go around the button. That'll help pin it down. I will put, you know, stitches in there as well. But fibres around buttons are a great way of adding. And now we want it to twist so that those fibres want to lay towards the rows. There we go. That's got it. fiddly but oh bandit so it's the evening now so I've had a very busy day you know how I said there was nothing much happening yeah everything happened but it's all good I got some stitching this evening and I said to my husband I'm just gonna go in he's watching this crazy movie there's a lot of gunfire and the mob and Family's just been obliterated, so now the husband's going to go out seeking revenge. You know the story. I think it's called Punisher. Um, John Travolta. I could hear his voice in amongst it. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that position. So I've just, I've gone round that button and then I've tucked it in against that lace. So now I'm just going to take my time and catch the fibers or the base of that thread that eyelash yarn in under the button like you know when when do you stop embellishing it's it's um just so much fun and the more you look around the room, the more you see, and you're like, oh, well, that would work, that would work. Okay. So I feel like that's quite secure. Now it's just a case of tucking it in under that lace so that it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, don't tell me I've come to the... Oh. See, I'm so excited about it. I haven't even pushed the needle through the right side of the fabric. I've come around the outer edge and gone back down. It's that silly movie we're watching. Yeah, it's Punisher. John Travolta. He looks reasonably young in it. So I'm guessing it's a few years old. And some guy has retired and they've faked his death so he could leave the FBI with some undercover fellow. And he's now retired and they're having a family get-together and they're all celebrating the fact that he's no longer an FBI agent and life is going to be great. And, of course, the bad guy, John Travolta, his son must have been um, killed. So they've just buried him and... Now he's put a hit out on him and he's figured out, well, his henchmen have figured out that this fellow's actually not dead and it was all faked by the FBI in order to allow him to retire. Like, you could write this stuff. It's so cliche, isn't it? So now John Travolta's goons are on the hunt. And they've found the family and they've just obliterated them all. So I'm guessing that's going to make a very upset husband who's going to want to punish them. I think it's based on a cartoon. I think I have a feeling it's a bit of a Marvel or um, DC comic spin-off. I'm sure there was a cartoon character called the Punisher. Anyway seriously it does not matter all that matters is that this tiny itty bitty piece of fringing is secured around that button 
making it look like this little rose has all these little fibers attached to it. Can you see them? That's all that matters. So this technically is my last one, but I am going to make a little itty bitty pocket for them to go into. So I will then slide them into this pocket and send them all off to the girls. So the next video will be how to make a scrappy doily pocket envelope to put these little pieces in. So there'll be one more video. Yeah, see that? It's just tucked in under that lace and around the button and it just gives a little bit of a bit of fibres there. I love that eyelash yarn. That's a variegated one, so I can dig deeper into it and find as a purple. Like, it just is such a pretty, pretty piece. I'm going to call that complete. Happy with that. I've got my little sparkly beads. Yeah, really pleased with it. So, what I'm thinking is I've got this... Uh, scrappy envelope I made years ago and I gave it to my mum and put a piece of jewellery in it for Mother's Day. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a version of this with doilies, you know, um, embellishing it and then the little pieces can travel inside. So that doesn't need to be as big. It'll be similar. Probably about that. And the little, um, each piece can be themed. So my inside fabric for this one would be a pinky tone or something. So that's what I'm thinking of doing for each of them. So stay tuned. By the time these videos all go to air, well, this one and the next one, these pieces will be with the girls. So I think um, there's going to be one more video, which will probably be next week. But we'll see how we go. It could even be... In the next few days so i'll have a look at the schedule but i just feel like making a baby version of this this piece so yeah just a thought nothing like more work is there <laughs> all right guys let's leave it at that and we're going to call this one finished i hope you like it oh, i really love painting flowers like there's just so many things you can do with them Seed stitch alone, I oh, just, I don't know, there's something about seed stitch. Just tiny little, little stitches. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to stop waffling and leave it at that. And I will see you in one more video connected to this project where we make the little, little bag, little envelope, little scrappy doily envelope. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Have a lovely evening. Or if you're starting your day, have a lovely day. Alright guys, bye for now.